Okay, in this class, I'm going to start with where we left off in last lesson. So if you recollect, in the last class, using MATLAB, we found out the 0H3. So if you see what we have derived, we derived 0H3 and we simplified this matrix and after simplification this homogeneous transformation looks like something like cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 minus sine of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 then you have zero and then you have L2 cosine of theta one plus theta two plus L1 cosine of theta one plus L3 cosine of theta one plus theta two plus theta three. Second row looks like sine of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. Then it looks like cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. Then you have a 0 and then you have L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus L1 sine theta 1 plus L3 sine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. Then we have a 0, 0, 0, uh, 0, 0, uh, 1, sorry, 0, 0, 1. Here we have A1 plus A2 plus A3, and then we have 0, 0, 0, and 1. So this is the homogeneous transformation that we derived in MATLAB. Now we have to solve this homogeneous transformation. Now please note what is given to us. We are trying to solve an inverse kinematics problem. Inverse kinematics matrix problem. 0 H3 is the solution of forward kinematics problem. Now inverse kinematics problem means that we are given, we are given orientation and position of end effector there are various ways the orientation and positions of the end effector can be given the simplest way is they would give us a homogeneous transformation matrix which is something like this and this homogeneous transformation matrix will have numbers. So this homogeneous transformation matrix will have numbers. So just to give you an idea, this would be 0.5, uh, this could be minus 0.5, this could be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 
zero, 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 one, and this could be two, one, minus three. Or they could give you something like the position Px is equal to two, Py is equal to one, Pz is equal to minus three, and the orientation of the end effectors. So orientation of end effector could be given in terms of its uh, direction cosines. So either it could be in form of, form of direction cosines or it could be given in terms of orientations. So they would give us a roll angle, a pitch angle and yaw angle. But nevertheless, however, the orientation and position is defined. At the end of the day, we can always convert this information into a homogeneous transformation matrix. So, and we will talk about it in uh, next few classes. So given a position and orientation of the end effector, in terms of the actual quantities, like uh, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, or one uh, 1.2 meters, 3.2 meters, 4.2 meters. We can gather all this numerical data and populate in the matrix, which is four by four. So what it means is this matrix. I'm going to call this matrix B is known. This guy is known. And mathematically, what we have is we have this relationship. We have zero H3, which is a four by four matrix. That is equal to this matrix B, which is a four by four matrix. Now this matrix B that is four by four is known. And zero H3 in this, we have unknowns like theta one, theta 2 and theta 3. So these are the unknowns. Now I want you to think about this in terms of expressions. And I want you to just look here for a second. Imagine your B matrix is given as 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0, 0 1, uh, the matrix what I could do is very easily, I could compare terms. So I know I can just say that I can just compare uh, first row, first column of 0H3, the first row, first column of B. That gives me one equation, cosine theta 1, plus theta 2 plus theta 3 is equal to 0 0.5. What I'm doing here is I'm comparing first row first column of 0 H3 to first row first column of matrix B. I can also compare, if you think about it, uh, something like sine theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 is equal to minus 0 0.5. So this is another equation that I have. So for an example, minus sine of theta 1, theta 2 plus theta 3 is equal to minus 0 0.5. So in other words, I have, so to speak, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven equations when I compared 0, H3 to matrix B. So I need to solve that these sets of equations to find out the, the answer. However, I want you 
to focus on something very interesting. I want you to focus on uh, this last term. So I'm going to say is if you look at uh, this term and I want you to look at this term. I want you to look at this term and I want you to look at this term. Now you can see that sine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 is point zero point five. And interestingly, the way the problem is set up, cosine of theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3 is also 0 0.5 just the problem uh, the given so what i could do and this is a little tricky so please pay attention please note l1 l2 and l3 are known so they are knowns which means the length of the robot l1 l2 l3 these lengths are known. So what I could do is, I could multiply, check this out, I could multiply L3 by this equation, again L3 by this equation, and subtract it from this big expression that I have over here. Which means, here is the next step. Assuming, B matrix is known. We know that a cosine theta one plus theta two plus theta three is equal to zero point five. Sine of theta one plus theta two plus theta three is equal to 0 0.5 l3 is known it could be one meter two meter or three meters whatever so i can multiply left hand side and right hand side by l3 so i can multiply the left hand side and right hand side by l3 and as soon as I do that, please recognize I can subtract it from the big expression that I have over here. So these two expressions, I can subtract L3 cosine theta 1, theta 2 plus theta 3. And I can subtract L3 sine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. So I can subtract and I have L2, L1 cosine theta 1 and L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. So now I have, I'm going to write this down something like this. Px is equal to L1 cosine theta 1 plus L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus L3 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 and Py is equal to L1 sine theta 1 plus L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus L3 sine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. Now, what is Px? Px is this guy. What is Py? Py is this guy. What is Pz? Pz is this guy. And it's known. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to subtract 
uh, 0.5 L3 from the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation. So my expression now going to become Px minus 0.5 L3 is equal to L1 cosine theta 1 plus L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. And then please note that the right hand side will be subtracting L3. So this term will cancel out this term. So I would land up with one more expression py minus 0.5 l3 is equal to l1 sine theta 1 plus l2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2 and i will pause here for a minute just just so that to make sure that everyone understood this mathematical operation so in this particular problem what we have is uh, we from the the homogeneous transformation matrix we can find out the numerical value of l3 cosine of theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 we also find the numerical value of l3 multiplied by sine of in the parentheses theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 and now what we are going to do is we are going to subtract this expression from the expression for the position this is the equation that we derived when we compared third row first column uh, sorry fourth row first column uh, first row fourth column and second row fourth column so this is what we have when we compared individual terms and now we land up with this expression now this expression is something similar to the expression that we have solved in last class what it means is we just have theta 1 and theta 2 and these two expressions now what we need to do is we have to eliminate uh, one of these terms and then actually uh, solve the problem in terms of the the remaining values so let's let's see now what I'm going to do is just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to rewrite this equation. I'm going to call this term as AX and I'm going to call this term as AY. Please note AX and AY, they are numbers and known. So moving on, I have AX is equal to L1 cosine theta 1 plus L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. AY is equal to L1 sine theta 1 plus L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2. Now I want to spend one minute just to tell you what to do in this case. Now what the central idea is to eliminate theta 1 or theta 2 from this equation. So which means what we want to do is we want to come up with some mathematical operation or jugglery so that this entire expression is 
in form in terms of theta 1 or theta 2. So it's always a good idea to eliminate the terms which contains multiple angles. So here is what I'm going to do. So finally, here, here is what I want. Finally, the entire equation should be in theta 1. So what I would do is, I'm going to take L1 cosine theta 1 and subtract from AX. L1 cosine theta 1 is equal to L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. Take L1 sine theta 1 term on the left hand side. Ay minus L1 sine theta 1 is equal to L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2. Everyone understood this? So what I did, I just I just moved one term to the left hand side. And the reason for doing this is I could square, I can square and eliminate theta 1 plus theta 2 term. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to have AX minus L1 cosine theta 1 square plus AY minus L1 sine theta 1 square is equal to L2 square cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2 square plus sine of theta 1 plus theta 2 square. And this quantity is 1. So what it means is I have left with AX minus L1 cosine theta 1 square plus Ay minus L1 sine theta 1 square is equal to L2 square. Now we have to somehow solve this expression. And to solve this expression, uh, again, there are tricks that you can play. And uh, the easiest trick that comes to mind is expanding. Let's, let's expand this equation first and then use the tan substitution. So I'm going to expand AX square minus L1, so two times L1 cosine theta 1 plus L1 square cosine theta 1 square plus Ay square minus two times L1 sine theta 1 plus L1 square sine square theta 1 is equal to L2. And now check this out. Some terms can be combined. For an example, we have L1 square cosine square theta 1, L1 square sine square theta 1. This term can be combined. And I would have an expression AX square plus AY square minus 2L cosine theta 1 plus sine theta 1 plus L1 square is equal to L2 square. Are you with me so far? Any questions? So what I did, I combined the terms. Now, just for the sake of uh, 
uh, simplicity check this out ax is a constant so ax is a constant ay is a constant l1 square is a constant and l2 square is a constant so this entire equation can be very conveniently written as something like minus 2l cosine theta 1 plus sine theta 1 is equal to a c which is which comprises of uh, just to give an idea what is this c c is equal to l2 square minus l1 square minus a x square minus a y square so this is the expression that we have this expression can now also be written as cosine theta 1 plus sine theta 1 is equal to minus c divided by 2l so i will deal with this equation in the next slide so i have cosine theta 1 plus sine theta 1 is equal to c divided by minus c divided by 2l and somehow i need to solve this equation so that to find out value of theta 1 and whenever we have an expression that comprises of sines and cosines uh, ax should let me see just a second uh, ax should be there uh, yes 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 you are right yes there will be ax here and there will be uh, a y here a x and a y right so this is going to be here yeah, i missed a couple of terms here so there will be a x here and a y here a x and a y okay now what I suggest is I just want to go through this process and then you can substitute the values at the end. So you can, I'm going to work this problem out by hand and just so that you know that very few problems <clears throat> you can work in the closed form. Otherwise you have to resolve to a numerical technique, but assuming the problem is solvable in closed form, I recommend finally finding the equations for theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3 in terms of link parameters and then substituting the values at the end. So this equation is going to become like AX and AY. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute. Remember the substitution we talked about? sine theta is equal to 2 tan theta by 2 divided by 1 plus tan square theta by 2 cosine theta is equal to 1 minus tan square theta by 2 divided by 1 plus tan square theta by 2. So I will substitute and you can substitute uh, the expressions. This can also be written as 1 minus u square, 1 plus u square, 2u divided by 1 plus u square. So I will have an expression ax. 1 minus u square 1 plus u square plus a y 2u 1 plus u square is equal to minus c 
divided by 2L. Once again, AX is known, AY is known, C divided by 2L is known. So the only unknown in this expression, so only unknown is U. So now we expand and as you can see, this will become AX minus AX U square plus 2AY U is equal to minus C by 2L. This is again a constant multiplied by 1 minus U square. Now this expression can be further simplified. So you are going to have AX minus AY U square plus 2 AYU is equal to minus C by 2L plus C by 2L U square. After you collect the terms, you are going to get a very nice quadratic equation, which is going to be C by 2L plus AY U square minus 2AYU is equal uh, minus uh, C by 2L AX is equal to 0. So this is the expression that you have and this is the quadratic equation in U. So you can find out the value of u to the equation minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. So from here, you can find out the value of u. u is tan theta by 2, which is essentially theta 1 by 2. So from here, we can find out the value of theta one. So at this point, theta one is known. So all this jugglery to find out the value of theta one. Now once value of theta one is known, we can go back to the equation that we have here. So so just check this out. This equation after theta one is known, substitute theta one in this equation. I'm gonna call this equation star and star and find theta 2. So once this is done, last thing is we have to find out theta 3. So once theta 2 is known, and please note, theta 1 is also known, Substitute the expressions in double star. Substitute theta 1 and theta 2 in double star and get theta 3. So this is how you will have to solve this expression. And again, this may look a little bit complicated, but uh, recognize once you work out few more problems, the procedure will be very clear. So let me quickly review what we have done. So we have to solve 
an inverse kinematics problem for r r r robot and in this robot uh, there are three revolute joints so the problem is the, they have given us the orientation and the position of the end effector and once the end effector orientation and position is known we have to find out the values of the joint parameters theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 so that the robot end effector can achieve that position first step to solve problem like this is to work out the forward kinematics forward kinematics means finding out 0 h1 1 h2 and 2 h3 once you have these matrices then you multiply these matrices and then you will have a, a final homogeneous transformation matrix and we use matlab to solve this problem the final homogeneous transformation matrix is given 0 h3 and i have shown that matrix over here now inverse kinematic means the the answer to this homogeneous transformation the numerical answer to this homogeneous transformation is known so, and again it could be given in terms of orientations it could be given in terms of direction cosines no matter what it is once we say the end effector position and orientation is known that means the homogeneous final final homogeneous transformation matrix is known in terms of its numbers its elements as numbers so essentially we have seven equations but these are transcendental equations these equation comprises of sines and cosines so we have to use mathematical tricks to eliminate some of these numbers so first and foremost what we do is recognize we try to see if there are similarities or if some elements are repeated and i have to give you a, a piece of advice here that it may not be very clear in the first go that how to solve the problem so for that you have to kind of see if we can do some tricks if some terms are known or if some terms can be approximated so in this particular homogeneous transformation matrix we know that the first row first column is in the first row fourth column so first row first column is present over here we also find that the first row uh, second row first column is present over here so we want to use this information and at least eliminate one variable from that big equation and we do that and then we land up with this equation which is given as two stars so at but this equation we eliminated theta 3 but we have theta 1 and theta 2 so somehow theta 1 and theta 2 needs to be addressed so for that what we do is we again uh, take the terms on one side and once we take the terms on one side we use the trig identity to eliminate theta 1 plus theta 2 so think about what we have done here we have we now we have cosine theta 1 plus theta 2 and sine theta 1 plus theta 2 on the right hand side we square and add that way we eliminate theta 1 plus theta 2 term and once that term gets eliminated we are only left with so what happens here the only terms that are in the in present in this equation are in theta 1 so once the terms are only in theta 1 we can use the mathematical trick using the half angle cosine formula to solve this equation and this mathematical trick is expressing sine theta as 2 tan theta by 2 divided by 1 plus tan square theta by 2 which is nothing but 2u divided by 1 plus u square 
cosine theta as 1 minus u square divided by 1 plus u square. Once you substitute all this equation in corresponding u's, we will find out the value of u. u gives us tan inverse of u gives me theta 1. Please note, it's a quadratic equation. So you are going to have two values of u's. So you will have two values, u11 and u12. Since it's a quadratic equation, and out of that, one value could be feasible and other value could not be possible. And for if in certain cases, if theta 1, 1 and theta 1, 2, which means both the values of u give you valid answer. So theta 1, 1 and theta 1, 2, you will continue with theta 1, 1 to find theta 2, 1 and theta 3, 1. So assuming, and this is something I need to write this down. So solution of u. will be u1 and u2 which means you will have theta 1 1 is equal to 2 times tan inverse of u1 and theta 1 2 is equal to 2 times tan inverse of u2 so there is a possibility that theta 1, 2 is physically not realizable depending upon the robot that we have worked out. But then what you do is you use equation star star and equation star star equation. So equation star to find out theta 2, 1 and then you would find theta 3, 1. From theta 1, 2, you would find theta 2, 2, and you would find theta 3, 2. So at the end, you are going to have three combina two combinations. You will have theta 1, 1, theta 2, 1, theta 3, 1 as one possible solution, and theta 1, 2, theta 2, 2 and theta 3 2 as another possible solution so this is these two are mathematically possible solutions however you have to look at the robot physical constraint so so select solution that is physically possible and how do you do that what you do is you add the constraints on the joints say theta 1 cannot be greater than 90 degrees or theta 2 cannot be greater than 60 degrees so you have, you look at the physical constraint of the robot arm and then select the appropriate solution. In very, very rare cases, both the solutions are feasible. And that is that happens rarely, but it is possible. In that case, what you do is you just present to the user that this position is achievable in, uh, in two configurations. So for example, if you have a robot arm, and the end effector position is here. So the, it is possible to achieve this end effector position by two configurations. So if you look at your articulated robot arm, this is your link one, this is your link two, this is your link three. Again, same articulated robot arm, this is link one, this is link two, link three. So it's physically possible, but then you give option to the user or come up with some sort of smart algorithm that chooses uh, how to get to that final position. So I just want to show you that two possible configuration in some cases 
are like so this is your first revolute joint this is your second revolute joint this is your third revolute joint first revolute joint second revolute joint third revolute joint and this is your end effect okay before i solve next problem uh, are there any questions on this problem yes theta 1 theta 2 which means u1 valid u2 valid are there any questions can i work out the next problem now sometimes some robots are so simple that by looking at the robot yes you can solve this problem in matlab uh, what you need to do is you will have to set up the simultaneous equations and then solve unfortunately matlab will not give you the solutions directly to the transcendental equations so you will still have to do some manipulations but at the end you can write a matlab program that will solve the problem any other questions okay let me work out one more problem and in this problem what we have let me let me draw the robot and i just want to give you some sort of uh, intuitive feel when how to solve the inverse kinematics problems quickly So what I'm drawing here is I'm drawing a robot, and before we draw the the kinematic diagram, I just want to draw a very simple three-dimensional sketch. of this robot so this is the robot and in this robot i have this first revolute joint i have the second revolute joint and then i have this prismatic joint so this robot is r r p now let's just draw let's draw the axes so this is the first axis this is the second axis and obviously you are going to have the third axis which is going to go something like this now let's identify the the joint variables now this is a three dimensional figure so since this is a three dimensional figure i am going to sketch a three dimensional coordinate system and one thing i want you to observe and understand that whenever we are solving the the inverse kinematics problem inverse kinematics problems are always defined in terms of the base coordinate system which means this is your zeroth frame and so all the coordinates or orientations will be with respect to the the base coordinate system so what i'm going to do is uh let's say i have i'm going to call this p z or this is my z uh this is my if this is my z uh this is my x 
and this is my y. So the right hand coordinate system. Now let's identify the distances. This distance is a two. This distance is T3. Now there are three angles. Actually, there are two angles. So this angle is theta 1. And this angle is theta 2. So I have a very simple robot. And what I want to do is somehow I want to try to solve this problem using some geometrical interpretation. So what I want to do is let's assume that Px, Py, and Pz of this end effector, which is EE, is given. So Px, Py, Pz of this end effector is given. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw some sketches, uh, some figures. And then, so if you see this and so let's assume that this robot is aligned with Y axis. So clearly in that particular case, this is my angle theta two. This is my angle theta two. And this distance from here to here is PZ. This distance is PY. And clearly, the way the robot is aligned right now, as you can see, PX is zero in this current configuration. Now, if I want to solve the inverse kinematics problem with the robot, is shown something like this. It's very easy. What I can say is in this current configuration, in current configuration, Px is equal to zero and Py is equal to d3 sine of theta 2 plus a2. So, sorry, pz, pz. So, what I do is sine theta 2 is equal to pz minus a2 divided by d3 so theta 2 is equal to sine inverse of p2 a2 divided by d3 now the next thing is uh, how do i find out value of d3 now, if you look at the value of D3, so if you look at Py is equal to D3 cosine of theta 2. So, which means in this case, I can find out Py divided by D3 is equal to or Py 
uh, divided by d3 so theta 2 is equal to cosine inverse of py divided by d3 now so again in this expression as you can see you have equation one you have equation two equation one and equation two are exactly of the form that we want they are in just one variable those equations can be used to find out theta 2 so i would write down a big expression something like this pz plus py is equal to d3 sin theta 2 plus a2 plus d3 cosine theta 2 now you have a choice take this equation do the u substitution and find theta 2 but some of you may say hey wait a second there is an easier way to solve this problem the easier way to solve this problem is I take equation 1, so which is Pz minus A2 is equal to D3 sine theta 2. And I take Py is equal to D3 cosine theta 2. Then I'm going to call this equation 3 and call this equation 4. Divide 3 by 4, Pz minus A2 divided by Py is equal to tan of theta 2. So theta 2 is equal to A tan 2. P C A two comma P Y. This is A tan two Y comma X. And then once you know theta two, find T three. So there are multiple ways you can solve this problem if uh, it's easier for you. Now, how do we solve this problem with the techniques that we have looked so far? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the homogeneous transformation. So what we have is we have a revolute joint. Then there is another revolute joint. And this revolute joint has a prismatic joint. We have a prismatic joint. So this is the first revolute joint, second revolute joint, and we have this prismatic joint. So starting up, this is going to be my frame zero. Then I have this frame one then i have this frame two and then i have this frame three so i'm gonna call this uh, z zero i'm gonna call this z one i'm gonna call this z two and i'm gonna call this z three the next thing is we have to set up the axis. 
so x0 doesn't matter so i'm going to have x0 like this for x1 x1 has to be intersecting c1 and z0 so this is going to be my x1 for x2 x2 has to be intersecting with uh, z2 and z1 and it has to be perpendicular to z2 and z1 so check this out so i'm going to have x2 please note the rule is not satisfied but as we discussed in the earlier case earlier problem will translate the frame and then what we will have is we will have x3 then we need to set up the values of y x z this is y not x z this is y1 now i have x z so y will come like this x z y3 will come like this now please note x2 and this is very important x2 is perpendicular to z2 perpendicular to z1 but does not intersect z1 so that is something that we have to keep in mind which means we will have to translate the frame so 0 r1 0 r1 this is theta 1 this is theta 2 and i'm going to call this uh, distance d3 so d3 from here to here this i'm going to call say a1 then i would call this uh, a2 and let's write down the the rotation matrices so cosine theta 1 Minus sine theta one, sine theta one, cosine theta one, zero 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 one. Let's not forget the projection matrix. The projection matrix is uh, x zero, y zero, z zero, x one, y one, z one. So x one. is aligned with x0 y1 is aligned with z0 and z1 is aligned with minus y1 y0 so when i write down the homogeneous transformation matrix 0 h1 first row first column first row second column first row third column second row first column second row second column second row third column third row first column third row second column third row third column 0 0 0 now a1 is the distance along z not so this is going to be a1 this is 0 0 and 1 this is going to be my first homogeneous transformation matrix now what i need to do is i need to derive the second rotation matrix 1 r2 
one r two is again cosine theta two minus sine theta two zero sine theta two cosine theta two zero 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 one Now we have x one, y one, z one, x two, y two, z two. So look at the projection of x two. Uh, x two is aligned with y one. Uh, y two is aligned with z one, and z two is aligned with x one. so once we do that our second homogeneous transformation matrix is 1 h2 is of the form uh first row first column so minus sin theta 2 first row second column zero first row third column second row first column second row second column second row third column third row first column third row second column third row third column so this would be one and then you are going to have zero zero zeros ones here now here a word of caution since frame 2 is not satisfying all the four roots what we need to do is we need to translate the frame so frame 2 needs to be translated to satisfy all four roots so frame 2 needs to be translated and when frame 2 is translated the relative distance between those two is actually zero so this will be 0 0 0 and this is happening because frame 2 frame is translated and is on frame 1 and that is the reason why this is zero so next thing is uh i need to find 2 h3 and i will try to do this over here 2 h3 So for that, first I need to find out two R three. Now please notice that the joint is revolute. If, sorry, the joint is prismatic. When the joint is prismatic, there is no orientation. So you are gonna have an identity matrix, but you will have a projection matrix x two, y two, z two, x three, y three, z three. so if you look at x3 x2 the way we have derived this is x3 is aligned with x2 y3 is aligned with y2 z3 is aligned with z2 so the homogeneous transformation matrix i can directly write down 2h3 this homogeneous transformation matrix is going to be 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 0 and now here comes the tricky part and for this tricky part i want you to pay attention this should be in the previous frame x2 y2 z2 so let's look at the distances the total distance since frame 2 is translated on to frame 1 the x distances 
is going to be uh, would be the x distance would be the projection of a two plus d three a two plus d three cosine of theta or uh, a two plus d three sine of theta one. And its y distance uh, is going to be zero, but its z distance is going to be a two plus d three cosine theta one. Now we got all this, so we just have few more minutes so i just want to take a moment here and ask you guys if you have any questions so far if not now i'm going to switch my uh, display to matlab And I'm going to work out this problem. So, uh, quickly, can you see my uh, MATLAB screen? Okay. Now, I'm going to start with the first uh, few variables. S Y M S A one. Then I have A two. Then I have T one, T two, T two, and then I have D three. So A one. Then I have A two. I have uh, D uh, D two. D3, T1, T2. These are the robot variables. So I'm going to say H01. H01 is cosine T1 minus sine T1 sine T1 0 sine T1, 0, sine T1, 0, minus cosine T1, 0, 0, 1, 0, A1, 0, 0, 0, 1. This is my first homogeneous transformation matrix. H12 is equal to minus sine T2, 0, cosine T2, 0, cosine T2, 0 sine t2 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 h 2 3 is equal to 1 0 0 A2 plus T3 multiplied by sine T1 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 A2 plus T3 cosine T1 
zero 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 one. Uh, what I'm going to do is I am I'm going to just I made a mistake in last homogeneous transformation matrix. Uh, one two three four. Oh yeah. So let's try. Okay, just check if my homogeneous transformation matrices look correct. So cosine sine. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply those. H zero three is equal to H zero one, H one two, H two three. And then I'm gonna simplify H zero three. So now, as you can see, finally we also have an expression that is of the similar form that we discussed earlier. Check this out. I have cosine and sine terms and sines and cosine terms. So what I would do is I would use this equation to find out the answer. So uh, we are running out of time, but I just want to tell you, you can take this term, this term, find out the value of T2. Take this term, this term, find out the value of T2. Once T2 is known, uh, you can directly find out the value of T1 because check this out, T1 is known here, T1 is known here. So you can get the value of T1, you can find out the value of T2, T1, and then the only unknown here is D3 that can be found out from this equation. So in this particular problem, I just want you to think about the final homogeneous transformation matrix that you have. And please note, luckily, we have terms that is just in terms of single theta, theta one and theta two. So it's very easy to find the orientation and then we can find out the value of D3. I would encourage you to take a look at this. H23 should be sine divided by cosine T2. H23 H uh, Let me see, did I make a mistake there? Sine H23 uh, No H23 because uh, the z axis is uh, in in the in the direction coming out of the book so but i I'll, I'll answer this question offline so uh, i will stop here and if you have any questions i'm going to be here for some more time and i'll answer those questions